First at Five. From the University of Florida's College of Journalism and Communications, you're watching WUFT News. In the coming hour, Florida could see its second execution since 2019. Louis Gaskin, dubbed the Ninja Killer, expected to soon be taking his final breaths. We'll tell you later how we got here. But first, a string of shootings in Gainesville continues. Two suspects were arrested and charged with one count of attempted murder over a shooting on 23rd Avenue overnight. Police say this is connected to a drive-by shooting that took place on Monday night, where 20 shots were fired at a young male. This comes after two unrelated shootings occurred downtown Monday morning, with one on Main Street and the other on West University Avenue. All victims suffered non-life-threatening injuries. And in Louisville, NBC's Morgan Chesky shows us dramatic police body cam footage authorities released from the mass shooting at a bank, where the gunman can be seen ambushing officers. He tells us the shooter's parents are now speaking out about their son's mental health issues. Yeah, we are getting a chance to look at this police body camera video that was released. And, and I have to tell you, as chilling as it is to watch, authorities say that these two officers who arrived, Officer Galloway and Officer Wilt, did exactly as what they were trained to do. Engaging the gunman here at Old National Bank as quickly as possible to eliminate the threat for others inside and in this area where this shooting took place Monday morning. Uh, in the video, you can see the two officers approach when they take heavy fire from the gunman that authorities say had essentially created an ambush environment perched inside the bank lobby, firing behind protective glass from an elevated vantage point. We know that Officer Wilt was injured critically, uh, putting himself in the line of fire. He was struck in the head. His partner, Officer Galloway, also grazed but able to take a defensive position. And four minutes after they arrived, Galloway fired the fatal shot uh, that took down that 25-year-old gunman. We're also learning more uh, about that, the shooter. He apparently bought this AR-15 rifle legally uh, on, as recently as April 4th. And overnight, his family told NBC News that he had been dealing with ongoing mental problems and issues that they were trying to help him address. And they could not have imagined he would have been capable of such a horrific act. But important to note, here in the state of Kentucky, even if you are suffering from a mental disorder or a substance abuse disorder, uh, there are no laws in place that would prohibit someone of that nature from being able to go out and legally purchase a firearm. The only law would be a federal one here that keeps convicted felons from buying guns. And that is why we're hearing from local leaders, including the mayor, uh, calling on state lawmakers to enact some kind of change. If nothing else, the mayor wants autonomy so the city can handle for themselves what he's calling an ongoing gun epidemic. Uh, in the meantime, we have heard from the hospital here in Louisville saying that more of those wounded and injured in this shooting have been discharged. Their only patient in critical condition at this point, 26-year-old officer Nicholas Wilt, who's listed in critical but stable condition. Morgan Chesky, NBC News, Louisville, Kentucky. This is First at Five from WUFT News. I'm Emily Palazzato. And I'm Lauren Miranda. We return to our top story. The man dubbed the Ninja Killer has just minutes left. Louis Gaskin is on death row in Florida State Prison where he will be executed by lethal injection at 6 p.m. He is convicted of first degree murder in the case of a Flagler couple in 1989. During a burglary, Gaskin shot his victims with a 22 caliber rifle. He was reported to have confessed to the crimes quickly after committing them. Gaskin will be the second Florida inmate put to death in less than two months. The state and U.S. Supreme Courts rejected appeals the Gaskin's attorneys filed since his death warrant was signed. At least two people are dead after a major crash in Polk County. According to the sheriff, it happened on northbound U.S. 27 just south of the U.S. 192 in the Four Corners area around 6 a.m. Officials say the crash involved five vehicles. Two people are pronounced dead and four others are seriously hurt. The investigation could take some time and drivers are asked to avoid the area. Northbound traffic was shut down, but everything has since been reopened. And the Florida Senate seems to be bleeding orange and blue today as it honors today as Gator Day. People from the campus community are at the Capitol talking about the University of Florida. And tomorrow is our orange and blue game. And with so much to go out and do, this, better, this weather better hold up. And for that, WUFT's Julia Haley is joining us now with the weather forecast. 
Lauren, Emily, looking a little rainy for our evening. We do have a tornado warning moving northward around Broward County, moving up I-95, but seeing those showers for our evening overall. Now, if you take a look outside of our studio, seeing those cloudy overcast skies, a little taste of what we'll see tomorrow at the orange and blue game. 73 degrees outside with those easterly winds starting to creep up due to that low pressure system. Our temperatures are currently sitting in the mid 70s, 75 Gainesville, 75 Ocala, 76 the Villages and 73 for Daytona, starting to cool down just a little bit as those clouds start to roll over us this evening. And if you are going to the softball game, expect that that chance for showers to start midway through the game. So you're going to see some clouds and then showers throughout the night and into the morning. Back to you. Thanks, Julia. And two elderly care workers in Brevard County are out of a job and facing charges. That's after they were accused of live streaming themselves ridiculing a resident with dementia. West 2 Scott Heidler spoke with an elderly care advocate about preventing these types of situations from happening. Arrested and now out on bond, two senior care nurse assistants accused of abusing a resident at Market Street Memory Care in Vieira. A tip to the sheriff's office coming from someone working at the facility pointing to this. A video live stream of a dementia resident on April 3rd as 20-year-old Shai Tiona Bishop and 18-year-old Jada Harris were caring for her. I'm sorry, yeah, she embarrassing. It's Lock her in the closet. Brevard County Sheriff Wayne Ivey also taking to social media, condemning the two. I'm disgusted. The perpetrators in this case are not only disgusting, but they're vile individuals who live stream themselves abusing one of our elderly citizens who suffers from dementia. The sheriff saying that the facility took the correct action once they found out about the incident, contacting law enforcement right away and firing the two who were in the live stream. The two face multiple felonies ranging from elderly abuse to video voyeurism. I've been in the industry since 1994 and the incidents like these are not the norm. But there are ways to ensure your loved ones are getting treated well and properly, like visiting unannounced and visit frequently, unannounced, see how they're doing, talk to them, make sure that you have a relationship with the staff where you can go up and ask them uh, to address a concern right away. It may be time to pay a visit to Universal Orlando. A classic attraction is taking its last visitors. And we've got a preview of your orange and blue game tomorrow, including an hour by hour forecast. But first, an Alachua County student is getting ready to represent his school on a national stage. We'll tell you why one eighth grader is getting all the spotlight when we come back. You're watching WUFT TV News. Welcome back. As we come on the air, UF Senior Vice President and CFO Chris Cowan is departing his position. After 30 years as an investment banker, he came to UF to manage the property's portfolio. He's heading to a similar position at Cornell. And an Alachua County student is headed to the Scripps National Spelling Bee after winning a regional competition. Weston Martin outlasted 13 students in the First Coast Spelling Bee in Jacksonville this month to win his qualifying spot. The Lincoln Middle School 8th grader will be North Florida's lone representative going forward after 15 rounds and over 125 words at the First Coast Spelling Bee. Martin says the key to winning and being a good speller is just learning the sounds of words. The National Spelling Bee will be held in Maryland beginning May 30th where Martin will be competing. And Florida Special Olympics athletes are partnering up with Alachua County law enforcement right now. Until 8 p.m. tonight, these athletes and officers can be your waiters at Texas Roadhouse. All of the proceeds will benefit Special Olympics Florida. And new data today from the Bureau of Labor Statistics shows inflation cooling to its lowest level in nearly two years. But with prices still high, the Federal Reserve may have to keep raising interest rates for at least one more month. NBC's Alice Barr tells us what the cost of borrowing money will do to the economy. Reassurance today that sky-high prices are headed in the right direction as inflation cooled to 5% year-over-year in March, down from 6% in February. It's the ninth straight month of easing price growth on an annual basis since a 9% peak in June. July, August, September, October, November, December, January, February, now March have been lower. 
grocery prices ticked down a third of a percent from the previous month, with bigger drops in items like eggs that had soared to record highs. President Biden saying, quote, this progress means more breathing room for hardworking Americans. Jobs are going up. Wages are going up and inflation is coming down. But prices are still way too high, with housing costs continuing to wear on Americans. A new CNBC Momentive survey finds that 70% of those polled are stressed about their personal finances. The biggest factors include inflation, economic instability, interest rates rising, and a lack of savings. More than half said they had no emergency savings. The latest inflation data indicates the Federal Reserve's aggressive interest rate hikes appear to be working to slow the economy, leaving investors hopeful those rate increases may soon be done. Though with inflation still well above the Fed's 2 percent target, analysts expect at least one more small hike next month, meaning an even higher cost of borrowing for consumers waiting for signs of hope in the economy to bring real-world relief. And one of Universal Orlando's longest running attractions will be shutting its doors next month. Poseidon's Fury is a 20 minute walk through attraction that opened with the park in 1999. It takes guests on a journey with special effects and live actors through the lost city of Atlantis. It's the last attraction on Universal's property that's not based on a movie or a TV show. Universal says it will be replaced with exciting new experiences, but hasn't yet said exactly what those will be. Industry insiders are telling us the next attraction in this spot might be based on the Nintendo series Legend of Zelda after the success of Universal's Super Mario Bros. movie. May 9th will be the last day to witness the experience. Poseidon is the god of water in Greek mythology. If you buy into that, Julia, would you say that Poseidon might be raining down his fury on tomorrow's orange and blue game? Well, I would say that Poseidon is definitely making a visit to our game. I'll have your full forecast in a few minutes. You're watching WUFT TV News. Currently tracking a tornado warning moving northward across Broward County and up I-95, but seeing this large storm system make its way eastward through Florida. Now we do have some showers for today and speaking of tornadoes, we have a high record for most U.S. tornadoes. Our preliminary count for 2023 is 410 sighted tornadoes, which is the highest that we have seen since 1950. Now, not only that, but if you take a look outside, we are currently seeing those cloudy overcast skies, 73 degrees, and we're going to start seeing these skies for just a little bit longer, running into your orange and blue game tomorrow. Now we are raising our temperatures about 11 degrees in Jacksonville, 8 degrees in Lake City, mostly along I-10 but pretty much staying the same here in Gainesville, sitting in the mid 70s overall and dropping throughout the evening. If you are planning on going to the softball game tonight, we are seeing that chance for showers overall. And tomorrow we are going to have a rainy Thursday, starting with those lows sitting in the mid 60s overall. That chance for rain staying throughout the day as that low pressure system moves eastward into our area. Our visibility is decreasing just a little bit, a little bit as these showers do move through through our area and for Thursday, those temperatures rising into the mid 80s. So it's going to feel a little warm and a little muggy outside as well. Now for the Taylor Swift Eras Tour, if you're planning on going in Tampa, you are going to have a great weekend. Of course, you can leave your cardigan at home. We are out of the woods on Friday, starting to see those sunny skies once again with a gorgeous Saturday, that high sitting in the 80s. Now we should have that chance for rain on Sunday. So if you do get a little wet, make sure to shake it off before you enter the stadium for the tour. So a very exciting day, but we are seeing that mugginess stay throughout Thursday and Friday in our area here in Gainesville. And then after that low pressure
your system leaves, it's going to be pretty pleasant outside. But for the orange and blue game, it, we're going to feel just a little bit blue due to these showers that we are seeing. So for Thursday evening, of course, we are seeing those widespread showers and thunderstorms. Those temperatures are going to drop around kickoff, and we are going to see those showers last. So you want to make sure that you have a rain jacket with you. Very important as those showers are going to last mostly along I-95, and they're going to stay throughout the majority of the day. So you see for Thursday around kickoff, seeing that chance for showers around I-75, I-95 as well, and it's going to last throughout that orange and blue game. So you are going to want to make sure that you take the precautions to be safe and, of course, watch out for that weather. On to your six-day outlook, we have that chance for showers on Thursday as that low-pressure system moves through, and then rising even closer to the 90s. Not only that, but if you take a look at tomorrow's plan, we are going to have that high traffic due to the amount of people leaving in and out of the area since that game is, of course, on a weekday. Showers and thunderstorms are going to last throughout the entirety of the game. And not only that, you are going to make sure that you bring your poncho and rain jacket so that way you can be safe and you can be ready for that game. So if you are planning on going to that game, it may be a good idea to bring your raincoat. Yeah, absolutely. I don't think I'll be at tomorrow's game, unfortunately, but Emily, will you be there? I will definitely be there. It's my last Gator football game as a student. If you're going, we do have WUFT's Jensen Young here to tell you a little bit more about the game. Jensen, what do you got for us? Emily, it will be my last game here as well before graduation, and this year's Orange and Blue game will showcase how head coach Billy Napier is able to adjust his schemes for his second year. New players and new coaches will also be making their debut in front of Gator fans. All that and more when we come back. Stay tuned. You're watching WUFT TV News. Welcome back for sports. I'm Jensen Young. And it is time for Gator softball fans to rejoice because it is Wednesday and Florida has not lost a single game on Wednesday this entire season. The Gator softball team takes a diamond again today, hoping to get back into the win column. Florida takes on North Florida this evening and for the first time this season. In the history between these two teams, the Gators are a perfect 13-0 against the Osprey. Florida enters the game with a 28-10 record and first pitch is at 6. The Gator football team will showcase their talent in the orange and blue game, which is just around the corner. The Gators have been working all spring implement implementing head coach Billy Napier's schemes. This will also be the first look at the new players on the team and the new coaches on the staff. One of those new coaches is tight end coach Russ Calloway. He talked about why he joined this coaching staff and what he looks forward to with the team. You know, I've had the chance to work with Coach Napier at, uh, at Alabama in 2011-2012 and We've kind of carried our relationship over, um, and that was a big reason why I chose to come down here after leaving the Giants is I want to be with a good, a good person um, that knew, knew ball, knew people, and was uh, a, a joy to be around and work for. And uh, I'm just I'm thankful for the opportunity and uh, look forward to doing some good things. The Orange and Blue game kicks off tomorrow at 7.30 p.m. at Ben Hill Griffin Stadium. The number two Gator gymnastics team heads to Fort Worth, Texas in hope of claiming its fourth national title as competition starts tomorrow. A big question mark for the Gators is if defending NCAA all-around champion Trinity Thomas will compete. Thomas su suffered an ankle injury in the second round and is still listed as day-to-day. -day. Florida competes in the opening semifinal, eyeing a top-two team finish to advance to Saturday's four-team final. The Orange and Blue have appeared in 39 out of 41 NCAA championships, claiming three titles. UF begins competition tomorrow at 3 p.m. The Gator lacrosse team will be celebrating tonight as they leave Virginia with a win, beating Liberty University earlier today. The Gators finish the game now with a five-game winning streak and a 10-3 record overall this season. The two stars of the game for Florida were sophomore attacker Le Emma Lapinto, who contributed five goals, and junior goalkeeper Sarah Resnick, who allowed just two goals and came away with the win. Next up for the Gators, they host Eastern Carolina on Saturday for their second-to-last home game of the regular season. Thanks, Jensen. And you and I actually have something big in common. If you don't know, we're both seniors here at UF. 
That's right, Emily. And it's going to be our, both of our last shows before graduation. And I really just want to say thank you so much to everyone at WFT. It's been a fantastic experience. Absolutely. Looking back on the last four years, working for the station and being able to tell each of your stories has for sure been the highlight of my college career. And finally, Jensen, here's a story about someone I know that you kind of love. Hundreds of Taylor Swift fans are lining up in the rain outside Raymond James Stadium to buy tour merchandise ahead of the singer's three concert series in Tampa. The first fans in line arrived armed with lawn chairs and blankets as early as 10 p.m. yesterday. That's 12 hours before merchandise trucks even opened. These trucks will be open until 5 p.m. at Raymond James Stadium. If they can't make it to the stadium today, Swifties will also be able to pick up Eras Tour merchandise online at her shows on April 13th through 15th. Trucks will be parked at the Ford Gate, Gate B, and the South Plaza starting at 3 p.m. Since it's Swifties only top stop here in Florida, she's expected to draw thousands from around the state and the Southeast. I know our very own Ashley Weinstein is going to be there, and our longtime viewers know that Ashley does the weather too. So can Ashley expect good weather at the concert, Julia? Well, Ashley is in luck. Take a look at our forecast. We are out of the woods on Friday, going to see those showers start to leave our area. A gorgeous Saturday and make sure to shake off any showers that you have coming your way as you walk into the stadium on your Sunday. Now take a look at our forecast. We are seeing showers for a majority of the orange and blue game. Make sure to bring your rain jacket and not only that, but we are seeing highs into the 90s almost back to you. Thanks, Julia. And for my last time, that's our show, folks. We're going to miss you, Emily. Have a nice night.